All right, welcome to discipleship training. Uh, last week we, we were talking about fear, and I wanted to just uh, talk about that a little bit more to make sure that, um, you know, that I just give some clarity. And um, so Hebrews 2.15 in the Amplified says, And also that he might deliver and completely set free all those through the haunting fear of death were held in bondage throughout the whole course of their lives. So last week when I talked about that the you know the first ones to be thrown into hell are the fearful, well that's what I really wanted to clarify. Why are the health and why are the fearful the first ones to be thrown into hell? Because they're not saved. And it says they've been they've been fearful of death their whole entire lives. Why? Because they haven't been set free from the bondage of uh, of sin and death. And so that's why they're the first ones to be thrown into hell. So now as believers, we can get our eyes off of the cross and we can get our eyes on the circumstances and we can get into fear. Now does that mean if you get into fear that you're going to go to hell? No. But it just uh, it means that you shouldn't be fearful because um, again, let's read Hebrews 2.15 And also that he might deliver and completely set free all those who through the haunting fear of death were held in bondage throughout the whole course of their lives. So that is not the believer. Now, you may be attacked with fear. You may be oppressed with fear. But guess what? You can get out of that. And you can be set free. And so, um, so I know firsthand, and, and I would you know tell you from experience, that, that it has to be with the work of the Holy Spirit that, that protects your mind and your heart from any onslaught of negative words that would bring fear. So let's talk about going to a doctor. That's probably the chief source for us, I think, today as believers is going to a doctor. Okay, because what? They'll speak to you words that will absolutely instill fear in you, right? And then what are you going to do? Can you overcome that by yourself? No. no. That's what the government used with COVID. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, the government used a fear tactic with us on COVID. And so I heard um, I heard over the weekend some people that we used to go to church with years ago still haven't gone back to church since COVID. Why? They're afraid. Yeah. See, but the Bible says he's not given us the spirit of fear. So, so literally, and, and we really need, I mean, I'm talking to myself, okay, because I'm saying some hard things. <laughs> but really, we, we need to, uh, that, that is putting COVID above Jesus. That means that Jesus' death on the cross was not enough to keep me from getting COVID and, and, and you know, getting sick. Okay, so, so, so I'm more afraid of COVID than, than I trust Jesus to go to church. I mean, if I die from COVID, what's the worst thing? I mean, it, it's not a bad thing. I've gone on to be with the Lord, right? right. So I, I shouldn't be afraid of that. Okay? And, uh, and so, so we just got to get Jesus put back in the right place. But how do we do that? I mean, honestly, I can't do it by myself. You can't do it by yourself. We, we have to seek the Lord and we have to go back to Him and say, Lord, I'm afraid. I'm afraid of COVID. I'm afraid to go to church. I'm afraid of what the doctor said. I'm afraid of whatever uh, you're afraid of. And you got to give him your fears. And you got to let him uh, take your fears because he's the only one who can do that. And he's the only one that can protect your mind and heart from these onslaughts of the enemy and uh, these negative words that we hear. And so what, what our flesh does is our flesh just grabs hold of any negative news, right? And our flesh just grabs hold of that doctor report or whatever, and uh, and and then we then we just go off the deep end in fear. And so the Holy Spirit, I think, before you, if you go to a doctor, you need to pray before you go in there. You know, and uh, and I think we need to pray before we go to the doctor. I mean, should Lord, should I go to the doctor? That's what I do. And I say, Lord, you know, and, and I'm making great progress in my faith on healing. But, uh, but if you're not there yet and you're still working on that and you do have to, you know, go to a doctor. And I'm not saying God doesn't use doctors because he does. So, but I'm just saying, Lord, should I go to the doctor? I've had him say no. Okay. And so, so uh, you need to say, should I go to the doctor? Lord, I need your direction. I need you to tell me what to do. All right, and then and then if you do go and you feel like he's saying to go, then you say protect me 
uh, and, and I'm not going to receive any negative, you know, any negative news. When I had salmonella, uh, I, uh, I, it's like the Holy Spirit just took over and spoke out. Because I was so surprised at what I said that I was like, that wasn't me. And, and what I told the doctor, they were giving me all this list of this horrible cancer. And, you know, they were giving me a list of my long of what it could be, right? And uh, it was all horrible stuff. You know, death, death, death stuff. And, uh, and I didn't receive it. I'm telling you, it just went off me like a water off a duck's back. And, and that wasn't me. That was God. Okay, because my flesh would have just took, took that and ran with it, right? And, and, and I heard myself saying, I shocked, I mean, I was shocked at what I said. Because <laughs> I knew it wasn't me. And I said, just tell me what it is and I know the Lord will fix it. That's what I told the doctor. And, uh, and so I'm like, wow, you know, and, uh, and sure enough, you know, he fixed it, but he, he fixed it through a doctor and through an antibiotic, but, but, but the, that whole the way I got the antibiotic and all that was just a miracle too. And even the, the Lord told Jeff that I had salmonella. Jeff told the doctor that the Lord said I had salmonella and he just said, no, it's not that. Well, come to find out the next day at three o'clock, the doctor come and I had salmonella. <laughs> And then ask Dad how he knew it was salmonella. And then, uh, and then the thing was with the antibiotic. Um, so I wasn't supposed to get an antibiotic till the next day because he said, "Well, I'll just give you a prescription for an antibiotic uh, just in case." And uh, and so I went. He said, "But you'll have to get it the next day because we're in we were in Illinois and they don't stay open all night and all that." So anyway, but Jeff said uh, he took me back to the hotel, sick as a dog, and then he went back to the uh, he went over to Walmart. And the pharmacist saw him walk by because he had recognized him because uh, he had come, you know, the, I guess the day before to get me some Imodium or something, which didn't work. And, uh, and, and he, know, he saw his hat and he said, Mr. Forrester, he said, I've got a prescription here for your wife. So, so he came back with the prescription and I wasn't going to take it because I thought, well, the doctor said it wasn't that and I don't want to take an antibiotic if I don't need to. And Jeff was like, I, I believe you need to take this now. So I said, okay, I'll take it. And I literally went from death to life. I, I literally thought that I was going to, you know, I mean, that's how bad I really thought prior to going to the hospital I was going to die. Okay. And, uh, and then that next morning when I woke up, I knew I was going to live. That, that's the difference that antibiotic made. So God used, used that. He used the doctors. He used, you know, the antibiotic. So, but what I'm saying is we need to ask. He'll tell you. Yes. He'll tell you to go or don't go. You know, he'll, he'll tell you what to do. Uh, another time, you know, I asked him about, uh, uh, I kept having these fainting kind of spells. And I said, Lord, what is this? I mean, I had been praying for healing for like a year and a half. And I said, Lord, what is causing this? And he said, the medicine. I heard it clear as a bell, and it was my thyroid medicine that was that was doing that to me. So I quit taking the medicine. <laughs> so you know what I'm saying? Just ask him. So that being said, that you as a believer, see, we can get our eyes so on our circumstances that we cross over into fear, and we and we don't believe God, and we don't go to Him, we don't ask Him, we don't. And, and what that does is that just opens the door to the enemy and he'll come in like a flood. And, uh, and, and so what he does is he comes in through, through oppression and, uh, and then he, what does he do? Then he starts wreaking havoc in your life. And, uh, and it's very hard to get him out after you've let him in. Now, I'm not saying that's impossible, but just like Robbie told somebody, he said, don't dare. Uh, he was asking somebody, or somebody was asking Robbie about do you think I've got, you know, such and such condition? And Robbie said, don't dare let it in. He says, once you let it in, boy, it is hard to get rid of. And I know exactly what he's talking about. And so we've got to guard against fear. We've got to guard against oppression. We've got to guard against those, uh, just like my dream that I had uh, about my leg being cut open. And, the, and the, I kept hearing, uh, be careful what gets in, because I knew it would kill me. If, if all this bacteria and, and, and uh, contaminants got in my leg. And uh, man, the Lord has really been using that, that dream in my life. And, uh, and because the devil's constantly trying to get in. Constantly, every day. And you've got to guard against that. And, um, and guess what? You can't do it by yourself. 
All you can do is go to the Lord and keep your eyes on Him and, uh, and know that it's by the blood of the Lamb and by, by reading the Word and renewing your mind to the point that, that you begin to believe the Word over your circumstances. And, uh, and I tell you, I'm not, I'm not going to... I'll be the first to tell you it's not easy. And it takes effort. And it takes work. And it takes devotion. And it, it, but you know what? I bet if you were uh, got a cancer diagnosis, you, wow! Suddenly you might have time to read the Bible. You know what's it going to take to get you to to crack that book open? What's it going to take to make time uh, for the Lord? What's it going to take to get you to church? See, we want to prepare ourselves before those things happen. Because guess what? You're not going to have any weapons to fight with if you wait until something like that happens. You better be prepared ahead of time. So, so the goal of all our Bible studies is to get knowledge, to, to, to renew our minds. You're not, your mind is not going to get renewed uh, you know, by doing like bewitched and twitching your nose. It's not going to come like that. It's going to only come by you making a dedicated effort uh, to seek Him. And, uh, and, and guess what? See, this is what Jeff's always talking about. If you're reading the Word, if you're going to church, if you're doing all this thinking you're getting brownie points with God, you're not. Because He's not going to reward you because you've done the work. What it's going to do is it's going to renew your mind. It's going to change your mind to where now you're starting to, when the doctor gives you a bad diagnosis, just like they did with me with Salmonella, I didn't receive that. And it wasn't me that didn't receive it. It was the Holy Ghost in me. And so, so it's renewing your mind to where you just you'll you'll be your mind will be blown at how well, how the Holy Spirit will start working in your life and how you know, I know good and well that I would have received that before. I knew that wasn't me, but because I had been putting the word in, the word came out. And so, so it's not going to, you're not going to earn any brownie points from God. God's not going to say, oh, well, because you went to church, because you read your Bible, I'm going to do this. No. Then Jesus wouldn't have had to die. So what he does is, because Jesus did die for us, then we want to get as close to him as we can. We want to learn all we can. We want to renew our minds all that we can. And then guess what? Then you just got to just let, just hands off and then say, Lord, you, you do the rest. I, I've done I've done all I know to do. I've done all I can do. And you you got to do the rest. So it's hard to fight circumstances if you don't have anything to fight with. <laughs> and uh, so I think, you know, so I think God loves me. I think God heals me, but I'm not sure. See, that's, that's where you want to get rid of the not sure. And the only way you can get rid of the not sure is by absolutely making a dedicated effort to seek Him. And that person is the one, the one that's not sure is the one that, that inevitably is going to get into fear. Because guess what? If you're not sure of God's Word, then there's no other option but to fear. And so we got to destroy that fear. And, uh, and we got to know the Word of God and we've got to decide that we're going to choose to stand on the Word. Because that is the absolute only way that the enemy is going to be destroyed. How did Jesus de de uh, defeat Satan when, when Satan came to him? With the Word. With the Word. And we think we can do it any other way? Hey, you, you can't tell him, oh, well, uh, I'm, just, you know, I'm just not going to be afraid or, or you know, what it, that doesn't work. you got to bring the Word. you got to bring the blood of the Lamb, and that's the only way that he's going to uh, back off. All right, so last week we were looking at 2 Corinthians 10, verses 3 through 6. And so I want to look at that again. And uh, we'll read it in the King James. Okay, Amplified. Okay, um, so the Amplified says, For though we walk, we live in the flesh, we are not carrying on our warfare according to the flesh and using mere human weapons. For the weapons of our warfare are not physical, they're not weapons of flesh and blood, but they are mighty before God for the overthrow and destruction of strongholds. Inasmuch as we refute arguments and theories and reasonings and every proud and lofty thing that sets itself up against the true knowledge of God, 
and we lead every thought and purpose away captive into the obedience of Christ. Being in readiness to punish every insubordinate for his disobedience when your own submission and obedience as a church are fully secured and complete. So what he's saying is, he's saying is we live in the flesh, but we don't live in the flesh. <laughs> if you're a believer, you're in the flesh, but you're not in the flesh. All right. And uh, so let me give you an example. So the other day I, I told you all about that dream I had that I knew it was from the Lord. And, and, and I had that, uh, that dream. But then this week I had a dream from the enemy. And uh, I was under horrible, horrible, probably the worst attack I've been under in, in a long, long, long time. And I had this dream from the enemy, and I'm not going to tell you what it was. And then when I got up, I could not believe it. The, the uh, dream was confirmed. And I'm not going to tell you how that happened, because I'm not going to give him any glory. And uh, I fought him all day long. I mean, it was bad. And uh, it was an all-out assault on my mind. I mean, it was, it was bad. And it was trying to pull me away from everything. All right? And I mean, it so disturbed me that, that I felt it physically. And uh, all of my flesh was involved. Because guess what? When, you're, when your mind is going, well, that, then your emotions get involved, then your body you know, responds and everything. It was just an all-out assault on my mind, my emotions, everything. And I, I really felt like I was overcome. And, uh, and so I, I knew that the only way I was going to break free of this was to get along with God. And, uh, and so I was kind of like going about my business, praying, oh God, send Jeff somewhere. I, gotta have some, I just needed some time by myself, you know. And so Jeff said, oh, I'm going to go get the car wash or what I was all that God. You know, I just, <laughs> and so he left. And so I just, I, I, I don't know, I just pray and pace. And I just paced my living room and just, just prayed scripture, pled the blood, you know, and everything. And, and asked him to deliver me because it was horrible. Now, it didn't go away right then. And, and really, it stayed with me all day long. Now, I did feel better after that, but it still, it still just didn't leave you know, right then. And so, so this is what he's talking about. See, we're, we're in the flesh, but we're not in the flesh. That was my spirit that was attacked. All right, so what are you going to do when your spirit's attacked? And, uh, and it really reminded me of Peter and what Jesus said to Peter. He said, Satan wants to sift you like wheat, but I have prayed for you. And I really thought, you know what, I've, I've been talking about spiritual warfare on Sundays. I'm, I'm working on a book about my testimony. And, uh, and then I was to get preparing for preppers this Thursday for uh, the gap theory, what happens between the time that you pray and the manifestation. And I really think, uh, I, I don't know, I think I just, Satan hates it and he just attacked me to shut me down because I, I couldn't work on anything that day. I, I, was, I was gone. I mean, I was, I was in warfare. I, I couldn't work on anything that day. And so, so, so Jesus knew this and this is exactly what happened to Peter. Satan wants to sift you like wheat, but I pray for you. So I told the Lord, I said, Lord, I'm being attacked. And I'm being sifted, and, and I've got you. I've got to have you to defeat Satan for me because it was so overwhelming. I, I, there was nothing I could do. And so I told him, I'm trusting you to deal with this attack because I can't bear it. And uh, and so, like I said, you know, um, the it sub, somewhat subsided after I prayed, but it was still there. And uh, but I, my my feelings calmed down a little bit, and and I, I would say. I could think more clearly after that, but it still hadn't gone completely away, so I battled it all day long. But, uh, but this is what Paul's talking about right here in 2 Corinthians 10 through through 6, that we live in the flesh, but there was nothing that I could do to fight in the flesh. That's what he's saying, that your weapons of warfare are not carnal. In other words, I couldn't go get a sword or a knife out of the kitchen and fight that thing that was, that was attacking me. That wouldn't do any good. And that's what Paul's talking about. And, uh, and so if anything, if I had you know, given in to the attack, I, I would have literally destroyed myself. 
I would have destroyed my flesh. I would have destroyed my life. I would have destroyed my family. I would have destroyed everything. Uh, because this was a demonic spirit that was after me. And I had a choice to make. And, and the only way to fight it is through the spirit. Go, go to God in prayer. And uh, so let's look at this phrase where it says, now I want to read this out of the Brian Study Bible. It says, so although we live in the flesh, we don't fight in the flesh, for the war is spiritual. We have divine power to demolish strongholds. I'm telling you, if I had not gone to God in prayer that day, I don't know what, I literally don't know. I mean, literally, if I had given way to that demonic spirit, I mean, it, it would have ruined me. It would have destroyed me. That's what it was trying to do. So what do you think it means when, when it says, and then again, this is in the Brian Study Bible, it says, we tear down arguments and every presumption set up against the knowledge of God. So what do you think that's talking about? How do you tear down these arguments and every presumption that's set up against the knowledge of God? Again, Jesus fought Satan with the Word. you got to have something to fight with. Can I ask you what yeah. you said? It said we have divine power. What was that after that, that sentence? We have divine... In a Korean oh, it says we have divine power to demolish strongholds. I love that, the way that puts that. That we demolish strongholds. You don't just you don't just overcome them and they're still out there. You demolish them. So we tear down these arguments. Because this is where the battle is. This is where you're attacked. So what do you got to do? He says when you're attacked up here, how are you going to tear that down? How are you going to... How are you going to fight that? Well, he goes on and, uh, and he says, We take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. So how do you take those thoughts captive? Well, one, you reject it. Well, you know, some, sometimes recognizing it first. Because yeah. I used to have dreams. I mean, I've always had vivid dreams, but I never really knew where they were coming from. Yeah. And then about a, maybe a year or two, I started realizing... Okay, these definitely aren't God. Yes. And they're not me. Yes. So they have to be yes. demonic. So now that I can recognize yes. them. Yes. Yeah. Then you can fight against then, them. Then I can yeah. fight against them. Yeah. Exactly. That's what I've been telling y'all for weeks. Is if you, How can you fight the enemy if you don't know who the enemy is? I mean, literally, if you go to war, you know, and everybody's got the same uniform on, how are you going to fight? You're going to be killing your own people, right? Yeah. So you've got to know who the enemy is. And it's the same way in the spirit. So, so Paul says we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. All right, now if the attack is so bad, let's say, let's say I think the, the, the cancer, going to the doctor and the doctor telling you you've got cancer. I think that's a great example. All right, I'm telling you what. You are going to be, we all are, unless the Holy Spirit intervenes, you are going to flip out. <laughs> okay? Your mind is going to flip, just flip out. How are you going to overcome that? Only way stand on the word, or you just say, "Well, that's a wrap, and go be with the Lord." Yeah. Option A is to just accept it and die. Where option B is to fight it with what the word says. Which Andrew Womack did have a buddy that got diagnosed with that, and he was, you know, not a real young man anymore. I think he was like seventy, and he he just said he didn't want to be healed. He said, "I'm ready to go be with the Lord." And like a week later, he was just gone. And and really, at seventy, according to the Bible, you have fulfilled your days. So now that's what he said. He said he he listen, was just ready to go be with the Lord. My philosophy, later, he's gone. my philosophy is you can die too young or you can live too long. And that can be the mercy of God too, with it it went so quick. Yeah. You know, because some people suffer in years, but that's oh. what I'm saying. I, I I'll just tell you, I don't want to live that long. No, I don't either. No. I don't want to live to be in a nursing home no. or in a memory care or anything. I don't want to live that long. So I've already talked to the Lord about it. I'm trusting him that he's going to take me if the rapture doesn't happen before the, that ever happens because I do not want that to happen. All right, so you can live too long or you can die too young. <laughs> All these people saying I want to live to 120. I'm like, yeah. I'll check exactly. it out. Exactly. Right. It's like y'all have fun. I'm going. Time, right? yeah, I'm telling you, that's living And you know, long. I've noticed that. Yeah. There's old people who cling to life. 
I mean, I think my mother did that. I mean, she just, just the, the, there's just people that don't want to go and they just cling to life, you know. And, the, and then they end up suffering. I don't want to do that. I don't have the emotional buoyancy. I don't either. I don't either. I love the Lord too much. I just want to go be more. And for us, we have a piece of what we're going. Exactly. So that probably helps us. Yes. To say, Exactly. Do tree work. I've been oh, killed yeah. almost multiple times. Yeah. It was like, well, I almost thought I, oh, I almost did get killed last winter, not this past, oh, this winter, last winter, and I was like, I had enough time to go. Well, that's it. <laughs> that's <laughs> it. We're done. And then uh, Avery, another guy with me, uh, Bill had seen. He came up there and he really thought I was dead. And I was like, well, that's it is what it is. That's a wrap. To wrap it up, I mean, you have enough time to maybe think about your family, and then you're like, well, I'm with the Lord. You know, had a good life, you know. Go on and live the next one. And it's so life. crazy that those stories never bother me. I, I've never once gotten afraid because I just know He's he's protected. I just know the Lord's I, got Him, and I know yes. where He's going if He does go, and I just, I never get afraid. I mean, it's, it's, it's not that's me. supernatural. It's that's, right. that's, that's not natural. No. So, so, Paul is telling us that uh, he's showing us that it's our decision. Just like you said, it's our decision to go ahead and go, or it's our decision you know, I to fight. I would on that. I thought about that with Tree Work. I think the reason is, yes, God has protected me on multiple occasions, and two, I just know my spirit is just not, God's got a work for me to do, and it's just not His time yet. Amen. Now, can, now, now that being said, I go and Guzzle Jack Daniels yeah. about the blackout yeah. and hit my buddy's Ferrari yeah. and go 180 miles an hour down the water and I die. Right. Prematurely. Now, I do believe you can yeah. do stupid, retarded exactly. things and take yourself out of yes. the will yeah. of God. Exactly. You could be at work, oh, I'm not going to double tie I'm just going to unhook my eyes yes. faster. And you, your spikes hit out, you fall 80 feet and you're down impact. You could have God protected you. Yeah, you could. But you also were an idiot. You know, and just did willfully dumb things. So I do believe we can we can cut our life short yeah. by just sin and doing stupid exactly. stuff. And the Lord's been talking to me about, you know, uh, I'll have that little tiny, teeny tiny little thought that I think is me. You know, and I'll give you an example. Two weeks ago we went to eat with our neighbors in Alpharetta and Jeff's well they had to you had to use your phone for the menu. Okay, so we all had our phones out. And uh, so I used my phone and I responsibly put it back in my purse, right? Jeff's phone was still sitting on the table. I had that teeny tiny little thought that said, uh, tell Jeff to put his phone up. And then, that, and then I countered the thought with, oh, he's a big boy. He can do what he wants with his phone. Well, guess what he did? He left the phone. <laughs> okay. So we get home. He wakes me up in the middle of the night. All right, and tells me that he forgot his phone. He just realized it because he stays up way later than I do. I think it was 1.30 in the morning. He wakes me up, tells me he left his phone at the restaurant. Okay, so now I'm awake for an hour. Okay, so I'm like, that's what I get for, for not listening to that voice. So now I'm awake for an hour because he woke me up to tell me his phone was in our front. So then he had to get, go back the next morning and wait till they open and get his phone. But you know what? I thought, Lord, how dumb am I? That happens to me so much. I hear that little voice. It's just, it's almost imperceptible. It's just, it's just so quick and fleeting and I ignore it or my flesh will come up with a reason to refute it and then I pay for it. Mm -hmm. You let me down, he's my help. Yeah, that's what he said. You let, you let me down. You're my help, me. you let me down. The Lord told you, you let me down. You know, I did. So after that, I said, Lord, please help me to pay more attention to those the, that little voice that, that I constantly override. Well, I think everybody, especially close to you get to the Lord, you can just feel like uh, just the oppression of the world. And I remember we were talking about that, and I thought, you know, this is just. I've watched too much TV. Yeah. I've seen too many movies. I'm the one that's just the paranoid lunatic. That's not really it. Really yeah. at all. It's just like you can feel the spiritual oppression just in everyday society. Now you can open yourself up through TV and all yeah, that kind of stuff. Or you got demons, you know, tormenting you. But 100%. but yeah. But I would say the majority of the time it's not us. It's either the Holy Spirit or the it's people some kind of demonic. Really that are really spirit filled, I'm really looking for more. Yes. I can say the same thing, they can feel it too. Yeah. And I feel it more in certain areas than, than other places. 
So, so back to what that scripture was. So although we live in the flesh, we don't fight in the flesh, for the war is spiritual. We have divine power to demolish strongholds. All right, so if I know that I've got a stronghold in my life, and it may be a doctor's report. I mean, it could be a thousand things. All right? Uh, if I know I've got a stronghold in my life, if I know that I'm in bondage somewhere in my life, then I have a decision to make. And it's not that I'm going to go break the stronghold. It's not that I'm going to go break off the bondage. It's I'm going to go lay before Jesus. <laughs> and that's what I did the other day. Lord, I can't, I can't fight this. this. This is overwhelming. This is overcoming me. This is more than I can handle. And, uh, and so you got to take it uh, before Jesus because it says that Jesus died and rose again to destroy the works of the enemy. So the sooner you realize that you're overcome and you can't do anything about it, but He can. And you just lay at His feet. And then guess what? Then He's going to start dealing with Satan in your life. And then He's going he's gonna to capture the tormentor. You can't. If a doctor tells me I've got cancer, what am I going to do? I mean, really, what are my options? But see, I have to go lay before the Lord. Lord, the doctor said this, but I know what your word says. And I know that you're my victor. I know that you're my healer. I know that, that all this is, is a lie because your word says this. And so I'm going to trust you to overcome this for me. So what Satan does is he, he, he tries to take our minds captive. And I'll tell you what, he can do it if you watch too much TV, if you watch too much news. He can get you over into fear. And he can get you over into depression and everything else. And, and then, so you've got to really be careful, just like my dream. You've got to be careful. I kept hearing it over and over again in that dream. Be careful what you let in. And if you if you let that doctor's report in, guess what? It's it's you're it. You're you're his. You're you're that. You've given in to that. And uh, and instead, you got to renew your mind and know who you are as a child of God. And I'll tell you this morning, I'm telling you, I fight him all the time. I, I I was feeling down this morning. I was like, oh, you know, the Lord can't use me because you know I'm just don't have it all together and all that stuff. And then the Holy Spirit spoke to me and He said, that's why Jesus died. Because I don't have it all together. If I had it all together, he wouldn't have to die. But see, Satan wanted me to get all self-focused this morning so God couldn't use me as long as I'm all self-focused and not as long as I'm low as me and Eeyore. And... <sighs> <laughs> you know, God can't use that. And that's what the devil wanted. That was like when Dad had, remember, he preached Sunday. It was great. He said, by the time he got... Past the Chevron yeah. right here on the right. He said yeah. he realized he was literally Yeah, he like was. This. I saw him. He was literally slumped over yeah. like this just driving. Yeah. <laughs> and it's because the devil gets your focus onto yourself. The devil just told me. Or he gets your focus on your problems. Or he gets your focus on your bondage or all that. And so we got to renew our minds and realize that what he did for us. And then what? We won't live in fear anymore. Because guess what? When fear comes and attacks you, you're, you're going to recognize it. Like Jennifer said, you're going to say, you know what, that's not me. That's not me. That is the enemy. I mean, I'll tell you, that is key. When you finally figure out who's really talking to you. Because if you think it's you, you're just going to embrace it. And you're not going to reject it. Just like that thought about the phone. See, I thought that was my thought that he needed to pick, pick the phone up. And then my flesh said, oh, he's a big boy. He can do what, what he wants with his phone. No, I think that was the Holy Spirit telling me to tell him to put his phone up. And then, yes, that was me that said, oh, he's a big boy. He can do what, with what he wants. That, so that was Satan. I mean, the Holy Spirit telling me one thing and my flesh telling me something else. And then I went with my flesh. Don't we always go with our flesh? <laughs> <clears throat> so we've got to stop entertaining these uh, thoughts that are not from the Lord and pay attention to the thoughts that are from the Lord. All right? And ask God to help you. But let's say, what if you are overcome? I'm telling you the other day, I was overcome. I, I, I don't know any other way to say it. I was overcome. I was viciously attacked and I was <coughs> overcome. But just like... I told you, just like Jesus said to Peter, you know, because 
he he said, I, I have prayed for you. That that's the only way. So I went and I told the Lord that. I said, Lord, you said that Satan wanted to sell Peter like weed, and you said you would pray for him. So I said, I need you to intervene for me right now. And um, and maybe you don't know what I'm talking about. Maybe, maybe you haven't had this happen to you. But uh, it, it was so strange because all through Christmas, after the decorating got over with, because uh, I was really stressed out with all the decorating. But anyway, after that got over with, I really was just getting every day like downloads from heaven. I was, just, I was on cloud nine. All right, and it was so awesome, and I was having a marvelous time with the Lord, and then bam, I had that dream. Got up, I'm telling you, all hell assaulted me. What happened? <laughs> I mean, I'm on cloud nine, right? And then I went into the pit, <sighs> and uh, and it was hard, and 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 I can't even describe how hard it is, but. Uh, I just literally went straight to the pit of hell, it seemed like. And so what Satan... See, Satan was trying to undo the work that God was doing. He was trying to pull me down. He was trying to destroy me. And uh, and he was attacking me. And all I could do was lay at the feet of Jesus and say, Lord, I, I got to have help. Because there's nothing I can do to overcome this in myself. And uh, And so you may get hit with an atomic bomb from hell. I mean, if you walk with the Lord any time, just wait. It's just a matter of time He's going to hit you. And then what are you going to do when He does? So I think most of the time, you know, I think most of us suffer instead of going to the Lord and, and just laying at His feet and, and asking Him for, for help. Because when those atomic bombs do drop from hell, or they come up from hell, and we don't know where they've come from and we don't know why they've happened. And, and, and then what we do is we just suffer in the flesh. And we don't, we don't fight against it. See, our own thoughts. We have to take captive. We have to understand who the enemy is. Because you cannot fight something that, that you don't know that's the enemy. And, and the problem is we're all about ourselves to some extent or the other. I mean, I fight me on a daily basis. Because I'm all about me. <laughs> I mean, every day from the time I get up to the time I go to bed, I'm all about me. <laughs> and I have to fight me. I mean, me is my worst enemy. And, uh, and so many of us have to fight anxiety and depression and all that. But guess what? If you know that anxiety and depression comes from the enemy, well, that's half the battle. I'm being attacked by the demonic spirit of anxiety and depression. Well, as soon as you realize that, now you've got the ability to fight. But if you just say, well, it's just me. I'm just depressed. Or it's just me. I'm just, this is how I am. This is how I was born. This is how my mother was. So this is how I am. Blah, blah, blah. You'll never defeat it. Ever. You'll just succumb to it. Let's say you're suffering from shyness. Or you find a hundred reasons why you can't do something that the Lord called you to do. You know what that is? That's being self-focused. Shyness is all about being self-focused. Because guess why you're shy? Because you're afraid of what people are going to think about you. <laughs> so we're all that way to some extent or another. And, uh, and so you may have you know, the Lord telling you to do something, but you can't do it because you're so tied up in your uh, thoughts about you know, how shy you are. and how you know. But really, if you dig down deep, it's because you're that way because you're afraid of what people think about you. So therefore, it hinders you from doing the work of God because you're so tied up in self. And it's, it, it's painful, but it's right. Because we're all like that. So Satan has you so self-conscious, he's got you so conscious of self that you literally can't serve God. And then you can't fight the enemy because you can't get your mind off yourself long enough to even seek out God. So it's a common ploy of the enemy that he uses to ruin your life. Through being self-focused. So I would say that self is the portal to the enemy. Now, I think that is the number one portal to the enemy is self. And, it, and we've got to recognize that and deal with it or, or you're never going to be able to drive Satan out. 
and uh, and it's the same with a doctor's report. You get a bad doctor's report. Well, what are you thinking about? Self. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's say you get a bill in the mail and you don't have the money to pay for it. What are you thinking about? Self. Oh my gosh. What if I lose my house? What if I can't pay it? What if I what if I freeze death? What if they turn the electric off? What self? <laughs> So I don't care what the problem is that he attacks you with. Really, it's all self-preservation. And as long as we keep our minds focused on ourselves, he's going to have a heyday with your mind. He is literally going to wreak havoc on your mind all because self let him in. So this is, this is where we got to get to. That I cannot live with self and the Lord Jesus as, as the Lord of my life. So you got to decide. So let's read that again uh, in the Brian. It says, So although we live in the flesh, we don't fight in the flesh, for the war is spiritual. We have divine power to demolish strongholds. So we've got to decide, am I going to let self continue to reign on the throne of my life? Because guess what? The, the, guess what you fight self with? Nothing. There is nothing. Because <laughs> he says you can't. He says he says we don't fight the flesh. There, there is no way to fight flesh. In the flesh. So you have to decide, am I gonna continue to let self be on the throne of my life, or am I gonna lay at Jesus' feet and say, Lord, I'm overcome. I, I I'm I'm literally overcome. I cannot fight this. I, I cannot overcome this. I cannot just like if you had cancer, I can't heal myself. I can't overcome anything. But you lay at his feet and you say, Lord, you prayed for Peter when he was overcome. I'm overcome. Now I need your help and I, I need you to I, I need you to pray for me. I need you to help me. I need you to, to strengthen me. And then guess what? Go to the word and say, Lord, I need a word. I've got to have something to stand on. I've got to have bullets for my gun. So you can have an empty gun and, not, and can't shoot the devil with it because you don't have any bullets in it. So you got to say, Lord, i got to have a word to stand on. And, and then go to your Bible and just open it up. I swear to you, he, he will just show you a word. I've done that a thousand times. Lord, I just need a word. Open it up and there it is. Because you, you're, you can't fight the flesh with the flesh. You can only fight the flesh with with the Spirit. That is absolutely the own way. So, in closing, let me give you an example. So, when, when you get self-focused, which we all do, and when you care about what people think of you, and, and, and we all do to some extent, I mean, I don't want anybody not to like me. You know, if I find out somebody doesn't like me, that hurts me. Okay, why? Because I'm self-focused. <laughs> Okay, but see, no one likes to be disliked. But when you're self-focused, you really can't talk about the Lord like you should. Because, see, again, there's no room for the Lord in me on the throne of my life. I'm either going to talk about me or I'm going to talk about the Lord. And, uh, and so, um, so we got to make sure we get we get him put on the Lord, uh, get on the throne of our lives. Because see, the devil's going to tell me lies about what it, and you, women, especially y'all know what I'm talking about. Well, I just know what they think about me. I just know. No, you don't. You don't have a clue what they think. Oh, but the devil will tell you that you know exactly what somebody's saying. Oh, well, they gave me a look. You no, know, I saw that look. No. They might have burped and made a look. I mean, you know. I, I mean, we don't we don't have a clue what anybody thinks. So don't let the devil tell you that, because that's all a lie. And uh, and so the the spirit may be all over you, and the spirit may be uh, telling uh, telling you something, but you're so self focused that you you can't you know go share that with somebody about the Lord or whatever, but because out of fear of what they'll think about you or whatever or or then like this morning well the lord can't use you because you know you're just you just don't have it together so that's what i was hearing all morning you know if you just had it all together then the lord could use you well tell me who's got it all together 
we've only got it together because we put self aside and we let the Lord um, overcome things for us. And I think, and I'll stop with this, but I think until you figure out what happened in the garden, you're never going to get it. And when I finally got what happened in the garden, and Adam sold us out, okay? And I, my whole life, I thought it was just me. Okay? Well, it's just me that's messed up. It's just me that can't get it together. So when I found out that, no, Adam sold us out in the garden, and I know that sounds so simplistic, but I tell you what, it really came as a revelation to me. And, uh, and God showed me. And so I was able to say, oh my gosh, I'm not the only one that's messed up. The whole mankind, every person living, breathing is messed up. And that, that led a whole weight off my back. Okay, And so now I didn't look at self anymore. See, I was so self-focused that I couldn't overcome anything because it's just all about me and how I feel and how I messed up. And the devil just always, you know, I wasn't like Donald Trump. Well, I've never sinned. No, I was groveling in the pit the most of my life. <laughs> and when I realized what, what happened in the garden and I realized that, that, that because of Adam, he plunged us all into sin... Then, then guess what? Then I really got it what Jesus did. That, that he died so that I don't have to be in a, this prison anymore. So if we're in a prison of self or we're in a prison of any kind of bondage or any kind of stronghold, guess what? You can't break it, but he can. So yeah, I'm not, I've still got problems. I've still got things that I contend with, but guess what? Jesus can still use me because I'm submitted to him. And if I screw up and I don't listen to the Holy Spirit, Lord, forgive me, I messed up, I should have listened, blah, blah, blah. I repent, I turn around, and then I say, okay, here we go again. I get, to get, I get a fresh start and I get to start all over again. How awesome is that? Oh my gosh, it's just, it's just wonderful. So, Satan's always going to have a heyday in your mind. But now you know what to do. You recognize he's the enemy. And then you say, absolutely no way. I am not submitting to you. Jesus is praying for me. Jesus has died for me. Jesus uh, broke the bondage that, that, that you are trying to put me under. And then go to the Word and ask Him to give you a Word to stand on. And, and, and it'll break. It took about a day and a half for me to get over that, but I got over it. And, and the, the bondage broke. Alright, so I hope you all got something out of this. And just... Leave today thinking, Lord, I'm, I'm, help me to recognize that little tiny voice. Sometimes it's loud. Sometimes you know exactly it's the Lord. Sometimes it's so imperceivable you think it's you. But ask the Lord to help you like I did to, to pay attention to that little voice and, and not to override it. Because every time you do, you'll pay. And I'm tired of paying. So praise the Lord and join us for awesome praise and worship this morning.